good day and thanks for listening. My name is Kyle and this is the ACS Library, where I hope to compile brief, clear-cut videos explaining each task in the ACS one by one every day. I hope that these videos may help others find very specific information quickly simply by googling the ACS task or searching it on YouTube. These videos are aimed to assist in studying for the private pilot single engine land class airplane checkride, but you can use most of the principles as you study for any checkride or flight review. If you enjoy the videos, please consider giving them a like, and if you know somebody who could benefit from these videos, please consider sharing with them today. This is the first video of the series and it will cover eligibility requirements for a private pilot in the single engine land class airplane. There are a few lengthy lists on this one, so at the risk of looking lazy, I'm going to play some music and leave those lists up there to give anybody who needs it the chance to read through or screenshot them or pause the video and write them down instead of hearing me drone through them one bullet point at a time. The list of hours you'll need to have logged to be eligible for your license is found at the end of the video. It's got a white background so it'll take less ink to print. I recommend keeping a copy of it at home and crossing off tasks as you reach each checkpoint. The regulation governing requirements for certification is Federal Aviation Regulation, or FAR 61103, which refers us to three other FARs. FAR 61105, a list of required ground knowledge for the written exam. FAR 61107, Bravo 1, a list of required ground and flight training areas for the checkride. And FAR 61109, Alpha, how many hours you'll have to have logged before the checkride. FAR 61103 states that you must be at least 17 years old and proficient in English, hold a sport, recreational, or student pilot certificate, and comply with all the regulations applying to you. There's a little more to it than just turning 17 and speaking English, though. On top of that, you need to receive an endorsement that you've learned the aeronautical knowledge items listed in FAR 61105, which is a list of areas to study for the written exam, and another that you are prepared for the written exam. Once endorsed, you'll have to pass the written exam. I'll have a video on passing the written exam coming soon. Here's one of those long lists I mentioned. I'll leave it up there for a few seconds. You also need to receive flight training described in a list found in FAR 61107 Bravo 1, receive an endorsement for completion of the training, and another certifying that the baby bird is prepared to be kicked out of the nest. FAR 61107 is one of those long lists I mentioned, so here's that song again. <music> Moving on, you need to meet the requirements listed in FAR 61109 Alpha. I'll explain these. You need to log at least 40 hours total flight time, and we will break this down further into required dual and solo flight time. We'll go over the dual flight time before moving on to the solo portion. Three hours must have been completed within two calendar months of the checkride. You need three hours of dual cross-country flight training and three hours of flight instruction at night. Alaskans have slightly different rules here. The three hours of instruction at night are to include a dual cross-country flight over 100 nautical miles total distance and 10 takeoffs and landings involving traffic pattern procedures. These tasks are to be completed between the end of evening civil twilight and the beginning of morning civil twilight, which can be defined as the time when the sun is 6 degrees below the horizon as found in the Era Almanac. During this time, additional lighting is required to identify objects in good weather conditions or to carry out normal outdoor activities. It is recommended that instructors and students complete these tasks in one long flight to avoid spending time and money on multiple run-ups. Finally, you'll need three hours of flight training under simulated instrument conditions, or in other words, with your foggles or hood on. These hours are to include some basic air work, upset recovery, communications, and navigation procedures. Moving on to our 10 solo flight hours, these will need to consist of five solo cross-country hours. A cross-country is any flight in excess of 50 nautical miles from home. You'll also need to make sure one of these cross countries is 150 nautical miles total distance, including a landing at three separate airports, and at least 50 nautical miles as the crow flies between two of the landing points. I have an example here of a simple flight plan that would satisfy these conditions plotted on foreflight. If you look at the map looking thing, better known as a sectional, you'll see my flight from Provo to Delta to Ogden and back home. The top portion gives us some more information. I have circled in yellow the total distance of 233 nautical miles. Circled in red, we can see that we intend to land at three airports. And finally circled in green, we have not one, but three legs greater than 50 nautical miles total distance. 
This concludes the eligibility requirements for certification as a private pilot. I'm going to leave this list of hour requirements up here in case anybody needs to screenshot it. Again, it is recommended that this checklist be printed out and filled out as you complete your flight training. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope it was educational. Feedback is greatly appreciated, and a like, some hate mail, a follow, shares, or subscribes are all very helpful to me. Safe flying.